Welcome to my lecture online. Our next problem seems simple enough, but it can be kind of tricky to do unless we think of a particular principle that we can use to help us solve the problem. We have a person that's throwing a ball directly upward, presumably a pitcher that can throw the ball very fast, and catches it 5.1 seconds later. The question then is, how high did the ball go? Well, let's assume here that he throws the ball straight up, reaches maximum height, comes back down. We realize, of course, at the top here, the velocity will be zero, and maybe I should simply write V at the top. Makes more sense, so V at the top will be equal to zero, and we know that the total trip takes 5.1 seconds. We're trying to find how high did the ball go, and we have the three equations of kinematics at our disposal. Now, the principle we're going to use is this. When you throw something up, it takes the exact same amount of time for it to reach the maximum height as it does to fall from that height back down to zero. So what we could do, we can say, well, that means it's going to take half this much time to reach the top. So that means the time at the top is going to be half of this number, which is 2.55 seconds. And then it's going to take an additional 2.55 seconds to fall back down to the bottom. So we can actually solve the problem by saying, let's assume the ball has reached maximum height, the velocity at the top there will be zero. We can call that the initial velocity, and then we can see how long it takes for the ball to come down, well, 2.55 seconds, and then we can figure out how high it fell from, and that will be the height that the ball reached. So which of those equations should we use? Well, let's see here, we can, uh, Go to each equation and see what we know. Starting from the very top and falling back down, do we know the maximum height? Well, do we know the final height? And the answer is yes, that will be zero. The initial height, that's what we're looking for. The initial velocity in the y direction from the very top, and yet that would, we know that that would be zero. The time here, well, we know the time would be 2.55 seconds. One half is known, g is known, and time would be known. But in other words, we could use this equation to solve for, well, the unknown, that would be y sub naught. Next, we can look at this equation and see if we can use this one instead. So the final velocity at the bottom, well, we don't know what that is. The initial velocity at the top, we know that. g, well, we know that, so that would be equal to 9.8 or negative 9.8, and the time, we know that. So we can use this equation but this equation will give us the velocity at the bottom, and then we'd still need another equation to solve for the height. The third equation here, the final velocity when we get to the bottom, we don't know that. The initial velocity, we know that. G, we know that. And delta Y, we don't know that. So the third equation, we have two unknowns. So the only two equations we can use is these two, and the best one probably the first one, because that will directly give us the answer we're looking for, and everything else is known. So we're going to use that equation to solve the problem. And again, we use the technique where we say it takes just as much time for the ball to fall down as it does for the ball to reach that height. So we can write that y is equal to y sub naught plus v sub naught in the y direction times time plus one half g t squared, Plug in the numbers, the final height will be zero and it reaches back down. The initial height is what we're looking for, that's h. The initial velocity in the y direction, remember, the initial velocity is at the top, that would be zero. And this would be minus 4.9 t squared, which means 4.9 t squared is equal to h, or h is equal to 4.9 t squared. So then we get h is equal to, now 4.9, that would be in meters per second squared. That's half the acceleration due to gravity, meters per second squared, times the time. The time would be 2.55 seconds, and that would be squared. And then you can see that the second squared cancel out the second squared, and h would be in meters. And let's see what that is equal to. So 2.55 squared times 4.9, that would be 31.9 meters, 31.9 meters. Uh, that's almost 100 feet. That would be quite a throw to throw a ball that high, but I guess if you have a strong arm, you might be able to do that. But anyway, again, using the, the condition or the principle that it takes just as much time for an object to reach the maximum height as it does for it to come back down from the same height, and therefore, 
using that as the initial position, we can solve it quite readily using that first equation kinematics. And that's how it's done.